Savannah River National Laboratory has a long history utilizing robotics to reduce human exposure to radiation risk. As part of the Savannah River Site's Cold War Historic Preservation Program, many of the lab's legacy robots are housed at the SRS Curation Facility. So here's Robin, who might look familiar to you. The climate-controlled 27,000 square foot repository is home to thousands of irreplaceable artifacts and historic documents. Looks like the spare parts container uh, survived. Yeah, it looks spare like circuit board. And spare batteries. Yeah, looks like they got the control console here. I remember using these uh, joystick. Yeah, we have the uh, three monitors for the three camera views. And the cameras on Robin were not for Robin. Right. It was for the operator. So I know the, de the robotics department started in the early 80s. What was the name of the group? I think it was originally called either Robotics Development Group or a Robotics Technology Group. The primary purpose of the group was to explore the application of robots to hazardous environments so we could send robots into those environments instead of people. We maintained a fleet of robots for probably over 25, 30 years. So we had wheeled robots, tracked mm -hmm. robots, walking robots, pneumatically driven robots. They were very rugged um, workhorses and uh, we did a lot of applications at the site with uh, those robots. So can you tell me what you know about Robin? We really needed to explore walking capability which had the ability to go upstairs or step over objects where a wheeled vehicle just may that's as far as it can go and so we contracted with a company in California basically to build Robin for us this six-leg walking robot and not only the, the mobility that Ivan was talking about but once you got there you needed to have some sort of tooling to perform the mission the unique part of this particular Odetix robot is it had this package, which was basically an arm, three cameras, and lights, so that you could actually do something once you got to that area. And that was really what was unique about Robin. At the time, this was really the state of the art of walking technology. <laughs> Can you tell me about Alvin and Simon? Those were um, wheeled mobile robots that had a unique drivetrain and a unique way of uh, steering and navigating and that we thought had a lot of application here at the sites. Then we came up with a mission that we needed to do, which basically was to survey the floors of SRNL. And so we took the second generation of Alvin, which was Simon, in my intelligent mobile observer navigator. Uh, observer navigator. Yeah. I think we, we had fun trying to come up with names. Yes. So that was a task that we thought, oh man, this is perfect for a, a robot at night to follow along the wall and to slowly do a radiation survey of the entire wing, first floor really of SRNL. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was a great application. <laughs> How about the Mark II Hornet robot? From what I've seen, there were two of them, and one, it said one was for kind of emergency response, and then one was used for the sand filters to kind of look to see surveillance. A lot of our work had to do with radiological sampling, even going in pipelines and doing radiological surveys in pipelines where you couldn't send people, doing a videography of pipelines to see what their conditions were, mm -hmm. even air tunnels. It was great to see some of these things that we worked on uh, many, many years ago. Yes. So maybe you can tell us what, what's the plan for these robots or how will they be utilized within the curation facility displayed? Sure. We've been in this location since 2011. We're preserving artifacts on site um, so that we can loan them out. We have some of the robots that we talked about today are actually in downtown Aiken at the SRS Museum. We have Alvin, Simon, and the Hornet robot on display with exhibit posters to give a little bit of the history of what each robot 
robot did on site and just kind of the general idea of what the robotics group did at Savannah River site. As part of R&D engineering, SRNL's Imaging Robotics and Radiation Systems team continues to push the frontier of utilizing robotics to reduce radiation risk and resolve operational upset conditions. In the last year alone, the team successfully inspected the H Canyon exhaust tunnel and retrofitted a tactical robot to help clean up radioactive debris in the Defense Waste Processing Facility melt cell. And for 2018, development is underway for a redesigned robot to undertake the next scheduled exhaust tunnel inspection with potential light detection and ranging technologies.